last night the highly anticipated Star Wars The Force Awakens opened and again has broken another box office record. It's being estimated that the movie made between 50 to 55 million in its Thursday night showings, beating the previous record holder Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, which took in 43.5 million back in July of 2011. Industry analysts predict the movie will open to 210 million or more for the entire weekend. Dennis, what do you make of Star Wars The Force Awakens big opening night and do you think it will break the opening weekend record of 208.8 million set earlier this year by Jurassic World? Uh, it's actually not really a big surprise. Actually, it would have been a bigger surprise if it didn't break the record for a few things. One, I mean, Star Wars is Star Wars. There's nothing else like it. I mean, Harry Potter is big, but Star Wars is much bigger. Two, back when uh, Harry Potter debuted, they still had did only those midnight screens, where it's actually they couldn't show it until midnight. Now we have the, I think it started at 7 o'clock mm -hmm. last night. There was 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7.30, all through the night. So not a big surprise. Do I think it's going to break the Jurassic World one? I do, but I'm not like 100% sure just because, you know, I, I, I think it's going to make more money overall mm -hmm. for sure. But the weekend, I, I, I have a feeling that people may be a little scared in terms of like that, that didn't pre-order their tickets like we did they may be like oh maybe i'll wait till next week mm -hmm. i don't want to show up and then have to wait in a huge long line but i do think word of mouth is good i think the movie delivers i mean there is a small minority of people who don't like the film but it's not anything like controversial where it's like half the people love it half the people hate it. i'd say like 80 to 90 percent of the people that i've talked to and online critics everything they all like it word of mouth so i do think so i will give a prediction of Oh, I, I totally didn't think it was going to break the record now after this crazy, crazy week. I don't know, 235. 235. Wow. Uh, Clark, huge. What, what do you think? That's a big yeah. number. <laughs> what do you think? Um, well, I do agree with you. I think it's going to break the record. And uh, I think it, it might have been the last time I was on Movie Talk. I'm not sure. But uh, Mark Ellis and I said, yes, it'll break it. Harloff said no. I think Ellis and I are going to be right. Um, and uh, But, you know, I think you're right, Dennis. The, the thing that might be weird or throw a little wrench in it is the idea that everybody already got tickets. So there are no more tickets to be had. And you can't see it this weekend, so you better just wait. And that would be unfortunate because I do, I was saying you guys off mic before we started rolling, I want Jurassic World to be the lar being the largest opening weekend ever to be erased from history. <laughs> it should have never happened. It should have never gone that way. And but also The Force Awakens is, it's a great film. And also, I think with Force Awakens, you're going to have people who are going to see it three, four yeah. times. So you're going to have people going back as much as they mm -hmm. possibly can. So hopefully that will, that will you know, boost those numbers for the people who might be hesitant. Um, in terms of a prediction, I'm going to say like $11 billion. <laughs> billion. <laughs> wow. billion is my guess. And I'm probably going to be right come yes. Monday morning. David? I'm going to go a little under $11 billion, yeah. even though $11 billion I think is pretty close. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot around 225 million. I think it's gonna do huge. Enough. I feel like we're doing the prices right now, like one dollar, yeah. Bob. You know, but uh, <laughs> it was it, it was it's, it's such a great movie. I know you guys are gonna watch the uh, probably non-spoiler review and hopefully the spoiler review later. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. But I think that people don't realize that theaters are adding show times mm -hmm. even now. They're still adding more show times. I mean, they were cranking the, the the people in the theater last night. I mean, there was hardly any you know rest between uh, one show to the next show. So I think they're going to get as many showings as they can. I think it's going to surprise people how much it's going to make. I've never heard of a 5 a.m. showing of a movie. Yeah, yeah. and they're sold out. And John, yeah, I didn't know we're back there. Went they're to the 5 a.m. showing. Yeah. I, that's crazy to me. Yeah. And you went to the what, 2 a.m.? I went to the 2 a.m. showing. Sure. And people were rowdy. It was sold out. I mean, it was great. As soon as, it's almost like going to a, like, a Space Mountain over at Disney, as soon as like the doors opened, everybody started cheering. Yeah. We're all outside waiting in the cold for two hours. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. I, I went to see it for a second time. Uh, Wendy went with me, John Campia, John Schnapp. Uh, like, and just, I think, being around that crowd, because we'd already seen it, but this was the first time seeing it with like the general audience. It was so mm -hmm. much fun because there were so many people out there cheering and yelling. Screaming. And of course, Disney's smart. They, they opened up a merchandise like pop-up stand in the theater mm -hmm. so people would buy stuff I, I i have a feeling though most people didn't buy stuff until after they saw the movie because they mm -hmm. were like just in case it's the like the prequels <laughs> right. or something like that like and then after they like they they saw it and they were relieved like, All right, i'm gonna buy my merchandise now <laughs> um are you guys planning on seeing it again i am i, I need to because we were talking about this before i feel like 
I saw it half with my fanboy eyes and half with my critics' eyes, as you know, sizing up the movie compared to the rest of the action and other films that came out this year. So I need to see it again, just kind of relax and just enjoy it as a fan. I think that's right. And with the anticipation that goes into all of this, if you are a fan, you have expectations, yes. you have predictions, mm-hmm. you've been reading theories. It could be very challenging to actually watch the movie that is in front of you mm-hmm. with all of those things going on in your head. But I have to say, for me, you know, the first, the, um, this I had been very spoiler free mm-hmm. and um, and I really enjoyed the film and when it ended I turned I was like <gasps> And I turned to my friend and I was like, that's it? Wait a second. <laughs> it was just like this, um, without giving a spoiler, but I just was like, oh my God. And um, and so I'm absolutely even more excited for the second movie. And I think that that's something to remember. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a huge Star Wars fan and he got to go to the premiere. And I and, you know, I was like, so what did you think? And he was like, it's great. I mm-hmm. really like it. Is it Dark Knight level awesome? Mm-hmm. Maybe no, not. No. And But I think that that's a really good analogy because if we think about Star Wars as compared to like Batman for instance you know so you have a couple of great films that everybody loves mm-hmm. and then you have some movies that maybe left a bad taste mm-hmm. in your mouth and everybody goes no 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 wait a minute and so you have to have something that essentially sets everything back on track sets everything up so that the second film that can soar mm-hmm. and I think that that's exactly what's going to happen with the Star Wars franchise. That's what JJ does so well. He did it with Star Trek, he did it with, you know, Star Wars. I mean, he he just rewrites the ship. The ship needs to get back on track, like you said, Clark, and that's what he does well. That's why they hired J.J. to do the first movie. And, and by doing this movie, he had to cover a lot of ground. There's 30 years of history that they have to kind of, a lot of exposition in the movie, but he kind of has set up, set it up for Ryan Johnson, just like throwing a, here's the softball. I've, you know, I've done all, a lot of work for you, so now you can just hit it out of the ballpark, like a Dark Knight or, or Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, this is, this is not going to be my favorite movie of the year, but it might have been my favorite movie-going experience of totally. the year. You know, it was just so much fun. But, but yeah, I, I think once you shed a lot of the expectations and the hype, and and, and then maybe when you guys you see it a second time, you saw it. Uh, just my first, Just time, first time last time. night. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to probably go again soon. All the people I saw it with, it was like their second time, and I think they enjoyed it more because they could release all of those things and just watch it. I actually want to see it again let's say this weekend but i may not just because i am afraid that Mm -hmm. there's just going to be so many people and so maybe i'll wait till till next week hey guys if you like this clip click here to watch the entire episode also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at collider